Welcome everyone, today we'll have a new build guide for Diablo 4 Season 4 with the Necromancer. Now looking behind me, I'm currently attempting a tier 50 dungeon with my Necromancer at level 88. Now I don't have the perfect gears or the perfect stats or the perfect weapons, which I'll show you guys later, but you get to see how powerful the Necromancer is with my hybrid summoner's build. What you can notice with this Necromancer is that we're quite durable. So as a brief summary of my stats, you can see I have about 17,000 attack power, about 14,000 armor, and over 16,000 life. And yes, this is a very tanky, very durable, super speedy mapping necromancer that deals tons of damage to AoE to minions and also bosses. And as you can see on the map, each of my minions are pretty much one-shotting the enemy. And together with my golem as my biggest source of damage, this hybrid necromancer deals tons of damage. And yes, I can easily do a tier 60 or tier 70 dungeon, but I think a tier you know, 50 dungeon is good enough for me to be leveling and demonstrating the power of this build. Now very soon guys, once I get to level 100, I'll be demonstrating the upgraded version of this build at tier 100. And this build is very powerful. What you can notice is I'm constantly reducing my cooldowns and also spamming my corpse tendril which allows me to have almost no cooldown with my spells and also disabling the enemies and dealing tons of AoE damage. I'm grouping enemies together. We're also auto-casting our corpse tendril and also summoning skeletons. And then together with the ability to have a burst damage by using the army of the dead, this build is extremely powerful. So coming over here to the boss fight against the TS50 boss, now again, the Necromancers are extremely powerful simply because the amount of Necrominions that is inheriting our damage and the source of burst damage. And here I didn't even use my strongest burst damage, which is actually coming from my ultimate, which gives me tons of attack speed. And yes guys, this is a really fun build, and if you want to be leveling, if you want to be pushing for higher content, and if you want to be super tanky, speedy, while dealing tons of damage all around, in terms of AoE and also against the boss, this is a really fun Necromancer build to be trying for the new season. Now similar to all of the builds guide, what I do at the end of the video is I'll show you guys a replay of this entire run, and also the gears and also items I was using during level 88. So coming over to my character for the item choices, aspects, and also the choices of tempering. Now I'm in the process of making the build guide for you guys, so while updating this video, I'll be making the build guide on mobility for you guys in the links below if you want to have a look. So right away you can see, the two-handed weapon ideally we want a high item power, but I was lucky enough to get a two greater effects on this weapon, so I kept it for now. I am rolling for mini attack speed, summoning damage is not bad, you can also get golem damage. And the life does help because this gives me a boost of life. So you know, the, the life and also intelligence is really nice. Ideally, you want minion increased damage while active, and this is a multiply up to 80%. After that, I'm actually going for more mini attack speed, up to 68% with mini attack speed. I rolled 61% over here on the amulet. And this can also roll additionally with minion damage, and also additionally with armor and also maximum life on the amulet. Now, my third offensive choice for this build is the Army of the Dead. And this allows my minions to gain up to 100% attack speed when activating my ultimate. And this together, in combined with the Ring of Madeline, allows me to have minions dealing even more damage AoE with physical damage. This also provides me with some minion attack speed and also some minion life. Now this particular unique ring over here allows me to have a little bit of free time. And this is what makes this build pretty much one button. I don't have to press rice skeletons, I don't have to press crops tendrils. Those can be auto-casted and this can be casted manually, which allows me to cast those spells multiple times to gain benefits from those spells. And this particular Ring, I won't say this is the best in slot item for the build because the stats are not really what we needed, but the automatic casting is great for leveling and also just progressing through the map. And having additional corpse tendril is going to be amazing. Now, similar to having additional corpse tendril, this particular unique boots allows me to have even more chance of doing corpse tendril while it's on cooldown. So together with the ability to lower the cooldown of corpse tendril, we're casting corpse tendril 
automatically, manually, and also while it's on cooldown, we spam our spells to have even more chance of casting this spell, which is amazing for disabling enemies and also applying vulnerability. Now in terms of my helmet, I'm going with additional skeleton warriors and also skeleton mages, and this allows me to deal more damage with both the golem and also my skeleton minions. You can see that some of my choices of tempering, I'm going with summoning damage. And in terms of summoning damage, this will benefit both the skeletons and also golems. In the future, I might shift towards dealing more damage with the golems over the summoning damage, because that is a high multiplier. By the moment, you can see we deal tons of damage. Now defensively, I am going with additional armor, and this is massive. So if I take this chest off, guys, I'm on 4,000 armor. If I put on this chest, I literally got 10,000 armor coming from the multiplier percentage and also coming from this legendary FX that is imprinted. So this is a massive factor. As long as you can get some additional armor percentage on your gears, this particular legendary aspect makes you super tanky. And finally, as for my pants, I'll be getting damage reduction for me and also my minions. Now those are not going to be the best in slot legendary effects for the end game, but during the mid game while leveling from level 60 to level 100, those particular legendary effects are easier to find and this should take you all the way up to level 100 and maybe all the way up to tier 100 using this setup. You're defensive, you're offensive, there's lots of utility and you deal tons of damage. And you can always switch out of this ring, should you want to be manually casting your spells to do even more damage or become even more defensive. Now here I forgot to mention that you might be wondering, hey Matt, how did you get those unique items? Well, we actually target farm two of those items in a few of the boss rooms. So this particular ring was coming from the boss of the, the beast in the ice. And this particular ring is coming from Versailles and the egg boss pretty much. So I have the links available to you guys in case you don't have the loot table. This is just the beast in the ice and you can see those rings are dropped. Usually the chance of getting those unique items is about one in six boss fight. And this boost was just a random drop. So in that sense, you don't really need the boots guys and just having the ring of Madeline will help with the build. And even if you don't have any of the uniques guys, this build can still work. You will still deal tons of damage just with the basic legendary aspects. Now in terms of the choices of my minions, I'm going with my, with my skeleton warriors which taunts enemies. So this means I'm more defensive. In terms of the mages, I'm going with applying vulnerability. And because we'll be dealing more damage with vulnerability, and also these boots happen to have more vulnerability damage, right? So yes, we we'll focus on vulnerability damage with our skeleton minions and also with the necromancer. Finally, with the golem, I decided to go defensively with golem absorbing damage. Offensively, guys, you can take the second perk, which allows the golem to do even more damage. And this is a personal choice. You can see that during the replay, I actually died once. And I was like, that's not good. So this is why I went defensive. So if I didn't really die, I died from the explosion because I was too greedy to loot items. So if you want to be defensive, you go for this perk. If you want to be offensive, you can go with this perk with a block golem to deal even more damage. Now briefly going through the skill tree and also paragons. It is pretty straightforward. We're many summoners, we're not using core spells. I'll be getting additional corpses. We will consume corpses for additional damage while boosting the powers of skeleton warriors and also skeleton mages. While doing so, we're lowering the cooldowns of other spells with decrypify and also having additional damage against cursed enemies. Now I didn't go with additional movement speed for the necromancer, because I don't think the 12% is that major. I actually prefer having a little more cooldown reduction on my corpse potential by having this one to level 6. So the additional level is coming out of this ring, which did not roll very high. So let's come back to this one. Now in terms of the rest of the spells, we're getting fortified by consuming corpses. And here we're going with all the minion perks over here, which makes us defensive and also offensive together with even more attack speed. In terms of the paragons, I'm using the golem, the corporal, the exploit, and also dread razor. Now my Glyphs are not level 15 at the moment, so this exploit is not working. Once we get exploit working, we'll deal even more damage. And I have the current Paragon set up for you guys to have a look, which is opt for additional damage and also more balance of stats, both defensive and also offensive. 
So coming over to Ray Place for a bit of demonstration of the skill rotations and also tips for the build. Right away, as you start the fight, guys, you want to cast Rip as your basic attack. This will give you additional ways to summoning corpses, which allows you to be auto-casting skeleton summons and also corpse tendril. You can manually casting corpse tendril as well. During this time, you also want to debuff enemies with decrypt. This will lower the cooldowns of its spells. So the combination is quite simple. You group enemies in with corpse tendril, and then you base attack them, and then you kill them. <laughs> and your minions will do the rest of the work. Because your minions also have chance of doing additional damage after a few attacks, with additional attack speed makes them extremely potent to deal tons of damage. Well, most of the time you can see monsters are dying within one to two hits. So this particular setup is great in terms of defensiveness because your necromancer is quite durable. Together with abilities to lower cooldowns and also clear waves of monsters, you should not have any problems in terms of how tight, nightmare dungeons, or any content in the game up to the end game. And it is really fun to group enemies in together to deal tons of damage. Now in terms of the boss fight, you do want to save your ultimate for a burst up to 100% increase attack speed. But as you gotta notice, we actually have a lot of ways to increase our minions attack speed. And as they attack faster, they will kill things fast. So I don't think you have any problems against a single target. And this is the power of this hybrid minion build. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this particular build. I'll be updating this build onto my Mobilitics guide. And this will be available for you guys to have a look in the links below. I'll also be constantly updating this build as we reach level 100 and to demonstrate to you guys on what we can do with this build in terms of a hybrid build, both using the skeleton minions, the golems, and also this particular ring. I'm still trying to find this ring in an upgraded version. This is currently a secret ring, but this still deals tons of damage.